Hi everybody, Patty in here. Welcome back. Hey, today I'm going to talk about Imbrilliant software. So many of you asked me, Patty Ann, what version, what part should I start with when I get Imbrilliance? Well, today I'm going to show you what I started with, and I'm also going to work my way through this manual. I'm going to start on page 81 and just kind of briefly go through page, might be uh, 80... 80, 88, and that's all about Imbrilliance Essentials, because that's what I started out when I first started with Imbrilliance, and it's probably a great place to start. There's so much you could do with just Essentials. When you feel like you want to move on, you can also buy another add-on to it, but start with Essentials, because after all, Essentials is essential. So I'm also going to show you where you can get this manual if you haven't found it already so that you can download it. I downloaded mine myself and printed it out. You could take it to Staples or somewhere like that and they'll print it out. If you don't want to print out the whole manual, you could print it out bit by bit. Just use a three hole you know, punch and start putting it into a binder for yourself. And if you go ahead and buy another part of Imbrilliance, you could uh, print that part out and punch it out. But I went ahead and printed mine myself and then took it to Staples and they bound it for me. So let's get started. I'm going to show you where to get in the free version too if you just want to try it out with me while I'm playing or while I'm messing around showing you things. If you decide to buy it, I appreciate it if you use my link because I get an itsy bitsy teeny weeny little commission when you do and it just helps keep Patty Ann's place going and me being able to make more videos for you guys. So let's get started to check out my screen of Imbrilliance. Okay, when you come to Imbrilliance.com, the page will look like this. What I recommend that you do is you could log in or you could make yourself an account, but even before that, if you'd like to, you can come right up here to where it says Downloads, and right here you'll check, let's make this easier, click on the operating system that you're using. I'm using a Windows machine here, so I'll click on that. And then it says, are you looking for the demonstration version? You can click on it to download it. Now, the next thing that I did was I came right down here where it says Windows, and here it says Windows Manual PDF. So I double clicked on that to open it. And it opens in Acrobat, and this is the manual that I'm using. Remember I said I was going to start on page 81. So if you're using this manual that's online, it's pretty easy to use. Look right here, it says Product Essentials. I can double click or click on that and it takes me right to that exact page. So this is page number 81. So while we're looking at this, I, I can show you uh, it says right here the idea behind Essentials is to include the features which are essential for every embroiderer, yet not to overwhelm the user with unnecessary extras. And it says some more stuff beyond that. And then it goes on to list some of the things that you'll get if you have essentials. So I'm going to, you says you get 12 fonts that you can use for multi-line text, monogramming, or circle text. You're gonna get sample designs, which are scalable and recalculate their stitches as you transform them. And let's see, you're going to get unlimited lines of letters or monograms. You can combine embroidery designs and you can mix and match fonts and sizes and merge embroidery files into your designs. So I'm going to stop right there for right now because I'm going to open up in brilliance now with just your seeing that I have essentials and I'll show you what those first few things mean. So let's check it out. Okay, here we are in Imbrilliance, and this is Essentials. Now, I do want to let you know that if you already have Essentials and even other parts of the Imbrilliance platform, this may still be helpful for you as well for a refresher. So don't hang up, don't turn that channel, don't switch that YouTube channel. Watch. <clears throat> All right, so here we are. Imbrilliance Essentials. 
And the first thing it said on page 81 of the manual was, remember, there are 12 fonts for multi-line text, monogramming, and circle text. All right, so let's check this out. Here is the font or the lettering tool. I'm going to click on that. As soon as I do, it puts out the ABCs right here in the center of your hoop. Now, when I come over here to the properties area, you'll notice that it says text ABC, and I can change that to anything I want. Maybe I'll put my name in there and hit enter, and now it's got my name in there. Too large for this hoop, but I can squish it down. All right. <clears throat> So it said there are 12 different fonts. Now, when you see my list of fonts right over here, you're going to be surprised because there are more than 12. Even though I'm only showing you essentials, you're also going to be able to see fonts that I've purchased. Okay, so let's do this drop down box right here. And any of these fonts that do not have a needle beside them are ones that came with in Brilliance Essentials. Okay, all of these ones without a needle beside them. When you see the ones with the needles beside them, that means it's something that I purchased. And I actually can tell where I got it by the name on a lot of them. For example, this one says DBJJ. That means Designs by Juju. Okay, and that's a, um, um, an embroidery website you might be familiar with. So once I get past all the Design by Juju ones, See all the needles? Oh, here's one. This is called Flare Serif. This is one that came with Essentials. There are more down here that came with Essentials. There are 12 all together. Okay, so you can see that there are a bunch of them. Let's go back up to the very top, and I'll go to the block lettering. So this is, uh, as, as I say, one that comes with it. Now, so we don't get confused by the hoop, if I just hit, hit the letter H on my keyboard, it will hide that hoop so we no longer have to see it. Gone. Okay. Now remember this. It said there were 12 fonts that had multi-text lines. So where do you get the multi-text? Maybe I want to say Patty Ann's and I want to put on the next line place. All right. I can't do it yet because right now what is selected is the single line single text. I want to have the multi-line text. Now look at that does. It opens up a whole thing. So if I wanted to put a, a poem in here like ring around the rosy. Rosy? I'm not sure. I eat pocket full of po rosies it must be. I E S. Pockets full of posies. And I can hit enter, or set, I should say, and then it'll automatically put it into two lines. Now, I'm not able to see this very well, right? So I could come up here to this magnifying glass and do something, or come over here to the compass rose and drag it down so stuff fits on the screen, like that, okay? But now you can see that I indeed have two lines of text. The other thing was it says that we could put things in a circle. So I'm going to get rid of the second line here to make it a little bit easier, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And I'll go back to the single line. There we go. And now if we go to this one, this allows us to put text on a circle. Well, when I do that, nothing really happens until I say that I want to slant, make it go around like this. Notice it's swirling all the way around into a circle. Oh, I can even make it a spiral if I want. Or I can go back out again. And notice right now it's going like this with the up. What if I wanted this on the bottom of something? If you see right here, it says place on the bottom. If I check that, check it out. Look what happens. So if I uncheck that, it goes to the top of a circle. Maybe I have maybe I have flowers around in here in a vase, and I want it to be at the top. Or maybe I want it to be at the bottom for some reason. So it's as easy as that to change. Um, okay, the other thing that we can do is 
let's get rid of this text. Okay, and we're going to come back up here to the text tool. And this time I'm going to put in my initials. And because I'm going to be making a monogram, I'm going to put my last name, the initial for my last name in the center. So it's going to be P C for my middle name. I mean my last name and then A. Okay. And then one of the things we're given is this. Scroll way down here to where it says monogram. There it is. It's MGM diamond. Click on that. Check it out. It makes a monogram perfectly just like that. Now I could click on this again if I wanted it to be a different way. I can slant it. I don't know why I'd want to, but I could if I wanted to. There's lots of things that you can do with these. Oh, look at this y'all too. When you go to style under the monogram, you can do it differently. And let's say we want it to be like this. Check that out. Or we want it to be like this. Or we wanted to do like this. I mean, there's lots of different things that you can do with it. And once you're putzing with it like this, of course, you can go and change how far apart the letters are. If you want them to be closer together or further apart, you can change the slant of them as I was showing. Uh, you can change the curve. So there's lots of things that you could play with here. And this is the monogram. So that's the first two things we learned about 12 fonts, which are actually now 14. Multi-line text, single line text, monogramming, and circle text. Okay, I did want to show you one more thing in case you like making monograms, but you don't like that font. Check this out. Let's go back up here to the create letters. And I'll, I'll just leave these letters in here and check. I already had it set up. So, well, let me make up my initials, P, C, A, and hit enter. And what I did was just when it says style, you can change the style right here. You can have them like that, vertical. You can have them square to the left. Uh, you can have it square to the right. <laughs> you could oval them. There's just so many things you can do again, you know, and so I'll, maybe I don't want that uh, font either. Maybe I want block condensed or maybe I want uh, block mini. And again, all of these options are available to us. Um, so this really is fun. And by the way, let me just show you this too. Now this isn't going to look very good because they're all caps right here. But see, I could change it like this. P. So I could make a lowercase p, c, capital C, wait, lowercase p, capital C, and a lowercase a and let's see what happens. So then we could do it with other fonts, even ones that we purchase. This was a designs by Juju. Here's another designs by Juju. So even fonts that you purchase from different places, you can make into cute monograms. And by the way, let's see, I don't know if they told you about this. Let's see. I'm going to go back to the single letter and I'm going to go back to the top to block. And I don't want it to be slant or curved at all. So I'm going to click on right here to make that go back to zero and zero. So now it's exactly the way it should be normally. <coughs> Excuse me. I can, however, still use these things. Do you see that? I can go ahead and change how my lettering works. And I think this is just so cool. So much stuff that you can do with this. Um, let's see what else. I could change the coloring by clicking on color here. The color swatch opens up. And I can change the color. Of course, well, I needed to say OK. Let's see that and say OK. And of course, this is just the color that is showing up on my screen. But if you look over here, it tells you if you have Madeira thread, this is the number that you would use, the pink rose one. I like to use Floreni, Floriani usually because that's what I have from a, a quilt shop where I worked. But I could come right here and click on Preferred. And when I click on Preferred and the machine knows, and I'll show you this in another video, the machine knows my preferred type of thread because it's mostly what I have is Floriani. So then it tells me automatically, okay, you're using Floriani and you want this color, pick out the one that says neon pink. If you're using Floriani and you want that color, 
pick out the one that says Russian Violet. Okay, so that's pretty cool too. Now it says that you can mix and match fonts and sizes. So let's go back to this and let's put this back to zero and zero and okay, zero and zero, like, right like that. And so if I wanted to now, I could uh, change this a little bit by clicking on this letter A by itself. When I click on the letter A by itself, I can go ahead, oopsie, and I can make it larger like this, right? So you can, when you click on a letter by itself, you click on the middle, this little green box right here. When you click on the green box, two other little things appear. This one allows you to move what is the thing, the one you've clicked on and the one after it. Okay. When you click on this one, this one allows you to make the stuff go weird like this. This one, as I said, will still move them this way together. Uh, but if you just want to move the letter C, you click on the middle one and that allows you to just move the middle letter. So these are more things, more, so much power in just essentials of things that you can do. Um, it says you can emerge embroidery files into your design. So if we come up here where it says merge design, it kind of looks like a gear with a, an arrow tilting down. Ignore this because I actually have another collection called the Merrily Collection. It's for making badges. So I'm going to cancel that. And then what it's going to do is it's going to, whoopsie, it's going to open this up for me so that I can see for Embrilliance. I'm afraid that more may be showing in here than what you will have because I have downloaded more for free. But see, notice I can still use these in Essentials. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to make an applique. So I could come here and get a shape. Maybe I wanted to make a chef's hat or a plane or a truck. I'll make a truck. I'll pretend. Okay, I don't want this PCA in here anymore. So I can highlight it here or over here and just hit delete on my keyboard. Now, you guys, this is an applique. And I can tell that by going here to the stitch simulator and running through this and I can see this first piece right here shows me where to put my fabric then it gets tacked down and then the actual embroidery begins well the reason why I chose to do the truck was maybe you know maybe you don't know my partner in crime Tammy used to be a truck driver I mean one of these huge trucks not shaped like this it was one of those rounded ones that held liquid but what I'm going to show you now is that you can add text to this so if I wanted to add text onto here, I would just come up here to the text tool again. There's the word, the letters A, B, C. I could type in Tammy and hit enter. And there it is. It's all in lower cases. If I wanted to make it all in caps, I could do that because I might rather do that. Okay. And okay. I want to show you something else that's really cool about Embrilliance. Whoops, I didn't mean to just move one. So I'm going to undo click right here and move it. What I wanted to show you is this. If you use these boxes to resize the text, it will not let you resize it too small or too large. The program knows what's the best sizes that you can use for this particular font to still have it readable when you stitch it out. So watch, I'm going to try to make this small. Suddenly, it won't let me make it any smaller. And let's see, I'm going to make it large. Now notice when I'm moving this, I'm not clicking on one of these green dots because we notice that that will just move the one letter. So I'm going to undo that. What I'm doing is just holding on to a random place in the stitches. But what I want to show you now is if I go like this, this is only going to allow me to make it so large because after that it will not look good. Now, there are some other, I don't think it tells in this one. Actually, it does. It tells you how the minimum and maximum size available for these. All you need to know for now is just use these to resize your font. And when you do, 
you can be assured that it will stitch out beautifully. One other thing I wanted to show you is this, and it mentioned it in our text that we were looking at. Check this out. Let's get rid of the truck by clicking on it and hit delete, and notice the word Tammy. If we come down here at the very bottom, you will see right here how many stitches it is. It's 1,760 stitches at this size. The beauty of this software is it's going to automatically change the number of stitches needed based on the size of the font or of your word. So watch. Right now it's 1760. When I make this a lot bigger, look what's going to happen to the number of stitches. Suddenly it went up to 5980. So this software is very, very smart. It knows if you make things bigger, you need to add more stitches. Otherwise, your fabric's going to show through and your font is not going to be very nice. So I love that also. Okay, I'm going to talk now about what they show on page 83, which is color sorting. But before we can get to that, I think I need to go ahead and show you how they got the word happy birthday on their page. So again, you come up here to the create letters and automatically it's going to open with um, the last thing you use, which for me was multi-line text, but it automatically puts ABC in there. I don't want that, so I'm going to type in in all caps, happy, and on the next line, birthday, and hit enter. Or in this case, when there's two lines, I guess you really need to hit set. <laughs> Okay, so there it is, and let me make it a little smaller so we can see all of it. Okay, now notice if you did, on page 83, they have different colors for all of the letters. And you may be wondering, well, if I click on this and go to color, and I try to change the purple to something else, it changes the whole thing to something else, assuming, again, that once I change it, I say, okay, right? But I don't want all of the letters to be the same color. I want them to be different colors. So you remember what we learned just a few seconds ago. If you click on just the middle box, the blue, the green box, while it's green, that selects just that letter, which allows you to move it or manipulate it. In this case, I'm going to manipulate it because I'm going to change it to a different color. So once it's chosen, I clicked on this color swatch right here, which opened this and I can change it to any color I want and then say OK. And then I can do the next one. Click on the P or click on the whole thing. Click on just the box for the P. Come over here and change this to a different color. Now let's suppose I want to change it to a green and I don't want to have to scroll like I'm doing right here. I can change this to say name. When I click on that to say name, it's going to allow me to search by the color name. So I can type in the name green and hit go. And there it came up with a green that I can use and say OK. Here's the next one. Click on the middle. Click on this. Maybe I want this one to be blue. I still have selected the color. I'll make it say blue and hit enter. And it comes up with some blues. And if I like one, I can say OK. There we go. And we'll do this last one or a few more. Actually, I'll do the next few quickly so you don't have to watch me do all of these. So this one again, though, I click the middle button to select just that one letter, come over here to where it says color, click on the color swatch, and choose something. Maybe I want it to be that green. Okay, there we go. So I'll finish these up and I'll meet you back here. Okay, I wanted to show you something else that's pretty cool about this program. So let's say I'm going to the B and I want to change its color. Remember, I'm going to click on the box, not the two things that have like arrows, not this thing or that, not that one or that one, just the middle box so I just get the B. When I come over here to the color swatch and click on it, I get all of these threads that are available in the Madeira Poly line. I could change it to Floriani if I wanted to, or any of these other types of threads that I might use. Maybe you use Isochord, okay, and there's all these different threads. But what I wanted to show you is this. When I click on this, and it goes to threads, 
instead of threads, I can change it to palettes. When I change it to palettes, it's going to show me everything that I've used so far in this palette. Only colors that are being shown right now are ones that I've already used. So this kind of makes it faster if you just want to use this many colors in your design. So with the B collected or the B selected, I could change that to this bright green and say okay. I could select the I click here again. Palettes is still selected since that's what I've used last. I could change it to the orange if I'd like and say OK. I can click on the I'll click on the R. I'm going to change it and I'll change it to the army green kind of color. OK. And the T click on just it and I'll change it to this whoops I forgot to say OK so with that selected click on this and notice it changes color but unless I say OK it's not going to stay like that I'll leave the H the same no I better change that so you don't think they're changing because they're both H's change that to this green again Say OK I'll leave the D as it is the A I will change to army green okay and the Y I will leave the same so remember the object of this part now was to talk about color sort so we are ready now to color sort it but watch this I want to show you why you might want to color sort it let's look up here at the thread simulator so what's going to happen is every time it goes through a color right like that it's going to stop and allow you to change your color to the next one. So the next one will be orange. And then it'll stop. And then you'll change your color, your thread color. If you have a single thread machine like I do. I don't have an eight needle or whatever. So then it would do the P, stop. Do the blue P, stop. The green Y. And then the green B. And then this, and so notice it's going to do each one of these letters individually. However, that is when this really neat thing called color sort comes into play. Okay, so again, suppose you're going to be embroidering this, maybe on a shirt. Maybe it's a little girl that says, it's my birthday or birthday girl or something like that. And you want to stitch it out more quickly than it's going to stitch out like this because again if you'll notice when I go to the stitch simulator there it's going to stitch one thing and then you're going to change the thread color another thing change the thread another thing change the thread so you're going to have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve times you're going to have to change the thread however if you do the color sort it's going to remedy that for you let me show you. So what you're going to do is come up here to where it says Utility. Click on Utility and click on Color Sort right there. Color Sort. So it's automatically doing it and it says the design page has been reduced by seven color changes. That means seven times less you're going to have to change your spool of thread in between stitches. So what it's recommended that you do is you go to new view before you save it. So let's go to new view and see the difference. Remember I think there were 14 color changes here. Let's look at the new view. Here it is. Let's look at the stitch simulator and now there are one, two, three, four, five changes of threads. And let's watch this go. So what it's going to do, it's going to do the pink color first. Not just the letter H, but all of the pinks. Then it's going to do all of the oranges, all of the army green, all of the bluish, all of the bright neon green. And see how much easier that is? So you'll change your thread once here to do these three letters, change it to orange, change it to green, to blue, and then back to green. Whereas on this one, you're going to change from this pink to orange, to army green, to blue, to green, to green, to orange, to, and so on. So you can see the difference. 
Okay, I want to show you something else. When you go to Utility and Color Sort, right? And here it is, it's been color sorted. You can do a new view of it and you can look at it or you can just say Save It. If you say Save It, it's going to automatically put the same name, but it's going to call it underscore sorted. So you'd say save. So then when you would go to your downloads folder and see it, you would see there are two different things. If I right click, I can uh, right, right click, view, extra large icons, and I can see that there's a happy birthday sorted and a happy birthday. So that's probably a good recommendation for you. So let's say that we do this one. This is the unsorted, the regular one. Let's say we go to Utility and Color Sort, and we go to New View. If you decide you like the new view after you look at it with the a Stitch Simulator, you can come up here to File, Save Stitch File As, and you might want to save it as birthday underscore sorted just so you will know that that's the sorted one and you still have the original one in case you want to go back to the original one for some reason. Okay, I do want to caution you here to do a test so before you use your color sort on your really good stuff because sometimes designers do put colors in certain orders because there needs to be a stop especially in like applique so that you have time to put your fabric down before it stitches around your fabric. So just bear that in mind. Color sort you need to be thinking when you're using it. But okay, so now we have happy birthday here and I wanted to show you something else that's available in Essentials. So right now remember I turned off my hoop by hitting the letter H on my keyboard. I'm going to hit the H again to bring my hoop back. Okay, there's my hoop back. It actually is a 6x10 hoop, I believe, that I've chosen. Notice my happy birthday is really small in there. Uh, if I wanted it to be bigger or to fit in the hoop, all I have to do is this. Now, we were right here in the Stitch Simulator part, and I want to be able to click on the Fit to Hoop icon, but I don't see that up here. The way that I can see it again is just click on or on the stitch simulator again, which basically turns it off and it allows me to see the icons underneath. Now, if you hover over them, you can see that this one centers the design in the hoop, whereas this one will make the design get larger or as large as it can get to fit in the hoop. But remember, this software is very smart. It's not gonna let your letters get so large that they're not going to fill in, that the density is going to be bad. There's a certain limit to the size that these things can be. So I'm going to hit Fit to Hoop, and there, that's how big it can make them. Let's check something else out for a second. Let's go back and change the hoop. Right now I have the 6 by 10. I'm going to click right here to rotate it and say Apply. And now I wonder if I click on Happy Birthday, Will it change the size of that? Oh, look at that. Look how much bigger I can make it when I put my hoop sideways. So those letters are still appropriate. They're still going to stitch out beautifully because our machine is going to change the number of stitches. Let's check that out. So right now, the number of stitches for Happy Birthday is 4,855. 4,855. If I come up here and say, fit to hoop, it's now 11,937. So you see, the program automatically adjusts the number of stitches so things will stitch out nicely for us. Okay, the last two things that the manual talks about are is where the uh, program automatically removes hidden stitches. So that is right here if you should ever use to need to remove hidden stitches yourself. But the program, it says, when designs are overlapped, there may be stitches which are hidden, which you would like to have removed. And it says this process is automatically done, especially when you have it controlled by your preferences. So when you go to Edit and Preferences, and you go to Jumps slash Overlaps, 
notice that I have checked remove overlaps when saving stitch files. Okay, so it's automatically going to remove them for me. And then the other thing that it goes over is the project advisor. So here's the project advisor. And when you click on that, this is like, and it says in the manual, like artificial intelligence kind of. So what you're supposed to do is select your fabric. So let's pretend like I was doing this on um, a cotton t-shirt. Let's see what would be the best for a cotton t-shirt, I guess, cotton and poly. And the fabric thickness, medium. I was never really sure exactly what to do with these things. The fabric stretch, it has some stretch in it, some. And so then it tells you basically how to hoop things, what needle would be best, what thread weight is best, what kind of fusible, what kind of backing to use. These are just starters for you. These are where you can begin to do your testing to see before you do your final project if this is what's going to work for you. So I hope that this little tutorial helped you out. Remember, if you're new to Embrilliance, you may want to start out with essentials because essentials are essential. And again, if you'd like to purchase anything from Embrilliance, please use my links down below. And let me know if you'd like me to go on and do something like this same thing with the module called Enthusiast and show you everything that it can do. So again, thanks for joining me. I'll see you all again really soon. Bye for now.